And Jacob awakened out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place! This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. If you are in tune with what we've been covering on this channel and what's been going on in these last days, perhaps you might be able to perceive that the following scripture just read, which you see on your screen right now, is being fulfilled in faucets unimaginable. And Jacob, now Jacob or those who understand that Christ is the key to opening up the scriptures, now Jacob awakened out of his sleep because all who fight against Zion will be as a dream in the night. And he said, surely the Lord is in this place. Now with the defilement of our patriarchs and matriarchs, we know the secret doctrine of the second coming of Christ will be the government of our patriarchs and matriarchs as Christ as the multitude the oneness of John 17 so Jacob said surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not and he was afraid and said how dreadful is this place is none other but the house of Elohim and this is the gate of heaven now Maybe some of you don't know, but this quote-unquote BRC homeless shelter is the place where the fall happened in the Garden of Eden, which technically would be hanging above us. So the house of God would be where the children of God dwell, and the gate of heaven would be the opening of the prophetic door into our kingdom future. Now essentially, this is only a fragmented revelation as this understanding actually fits into the entire narrative of Jacob's ladder. So let's dig into the scripture and talk about it really quick. For those who have ears to hear, let them hear. And Jacob, now we already covered what Jacob represents, went out from Beersheba. Now Beersheba means the well of the sevenfold oath now the number seven represents spiritual completion okay so already we could see um the quantum shifts and the quantum redemptions happening to those who fall um from our heavenly father um happening that confound the wicked uh, we see that um unfolding already in the scripture so beersheba is the well of a sevenfold oath and went toward Haran. Haran means mountaineer. Okay? Mountains are the high holy places of the Lord. So we're climbing our way up there. Mountaineers. Okay? Let's continue. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place now stones are a representation of witnesses and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep now i think in this instance our patriarchs and our matriarchs being defiled and fallen are those very stones that jacob would lay on his head his prophecy as pillows okay And he dreams, remember, all those who fight against Zion will be as a dream in the night. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of Elohim ascending and descending on it. Okay? So the angels, now our patriarchs and matriarchs coming down from heaven, visiting upon us wherever they are throughout 
different places and other worlds and our galaxies and different places in, in, in their lives and all that kind of stuff are the angels of God. The angels of what? Elohim, as the Hebrew tells us. Ascending and descending on it. So again, we see these quantum shifts unfolding in the scripture. Verse 13, And behold, the Lord stood above it, the Lord is Jesus, stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. Abraham are those who are waiting the promise. Isaac, of course, are those is a symbology of Christ. The land whereon you lie, to you will I give it, and to your seed. We're already seeing that come to pass right now. And your seed shall be as the dust on the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in you, and in your seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. And behold, I am with you, and will keep you in all places where you go, and will bring you again into this land, for I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken of you. Now remember, this is Jesus, you know, Christ talking to Jacob. Jacob represents those who understand that Christ is the key to opening up the scriptures. Those who serve God. Those who are essentially in the house of Elohim. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. Again, the secret revelation of the second coming of Christ we can see in verse 16. And again, we'll repeat verse 17. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place. And there is none other but the house of Elohim. And this is the gate of heaven. Now, how I personally came upon this revelation, I was simply just listening to an audio book to the book of the Cave of Treasures, a rare apocryphal book, um, specifically in this instance where in the more obscure Syriac translation, there is a Gregorian translation that I don't have available on PDF. So, <coughs> we're in the Syriac translation here, and I'll just read this excerpt that just turned on the light bulb in my head and how I came to conclude at this revelation. And in his 103rd year, Isaac blessed Jacob, who was 40 years old. And having received his father's blessing, he went down to the east, right? The east is where the sun rises. He walked for one day in the desert of Beersheba and then slept there taking a stone for a pillow when he went to sleep. In a dream he saw, behold, a ladder put upon the ground as its top in heaven, while the angels of God were ascending and descending. Okay, notice how this text gives us a little bit more revelation than what's in our standard Bibles. Let's continue reading. Upon it and the Lord standing on top of it. Then Jacob woke up from his sleep and spoke, This truly is the house of God. He took the stone which he had used as his pillow, made an altar out of it, anointed it with oil, made a vow and said, I will put the tithe of everything I have upon this stone. And what is that stone in this particular instance? That is Christ. Remember, in the narrative of Genesis, it talked about multiple stones. So again, we see the hidden doctrine of the oneness of John 17 being the second coming of Christ. And even the third coming. So let's read the final paragraph. For those who have understanding, it is obvious. The ladder which Jacob saw depicts the cross of our salvation. Right? The patriarchs and matriarchs being defiled absolutely bore their cross. The angels which were ascending and descending upon it are the ministers of the gospel towards Zechariah. Okay? Towards Zechariah, Mary, the Magi, and the shepherds. So our patriarchs and matriarchs who were visiting us on the earth, who were thus being defiled in this quote-unquote homeless shelter, are ministers to us of the gospel. And they point towards Zechariah, 
Now, what is the end time revelation of Zechariah? That the priest Zechariah represents the victims of September 11th. They're also pointing to the Virgin Mary. Now, the Virgin Mary represents the kingdom on coming upon the earth, the Virgin Earth. And we have the Magi, right? The Magi um, were the magi uh, magicians um, who came to visit Christ at his birth. So we're seeing the birth of the second coming of Christ. And of course, they point to the shepherds, okay? So we ourselves, receiving this revelation, will one day be shepherds. So let's continue reading. The Lord standing at his upper end is to be understood as Christ, right? The, the divine divinity of Christ all the way at the top of Jacob's ladder is overseeing all of this, who stood at the upper end of the cross in order to descend into Sheol and save us. Hallelujah, praise God. I think that gives us a little bit of insight into the mystery of what God is doing now that all this is happening to save us. And indeed, we're seeing that come to pass right before our very eyes. If you could see what I see, all the multitudes gathering here at Fort Greene. We are thus being saved by God's grace and mercy and unpredictable mysteries. Now, before I close out this video, I want to share another faucet of Genesis 28, 17, the interpretation of the house of God that I believe is accurate. Now, we talked about the house of God. The Hebrew um, in our Bibles is used the house of Elohim. So again, our patriarchs and our matriarchs could definitely be those Elohim. But the way I got to Jacob's ladder was thinking back to one of Kurt Cobain's ex-girlfriends who was a visitation to him of Mary of Magdalene. And um, I remember seeing an interview that they watched Jacob's Ladder together, together uh, the movie. I thought um, it dawned upon me um, while understanding this revelation, Kurt himself, with all the rivers of water that he brought forth, um, could essentially be a, a faucet of a house of God. Or in actuality, all those who were called and forsake their families, their brethren, their land for the gospel's sake could be called a house of God because I think we're called to be houses of God. And Jesus says he will restore us a hundredfold. Now, what does the a hundred mean in numerology? Yes, it means absolute, but it also represents the Hebrew letter Kaf, which represents a following a pre-existing of the element of the number seven a pre-existent spiritual perfection so we would absolutely see this within the scripture thank you for tuning in Allah bless you